dead. Trying to find a calm pocket for you. Steady, Miller. Your heart rate is too high. Hello. Check in, please. Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. Today we take a look at a game that had a similar release to Cyberbuck 277 that was just recently released. With Bioware at the helm, what could go wrong? We are talking about Bioware's 2019's release of Anthem. The development of Anthem comes off hot off the heels of early release but patched up later Mass Effect Andromeda. You would think that they would learn from this process that would upset the players and tarnish the brand. Unfortunately, EA didn't and released Anthem in almost the same way with a bad management, indecisive team leaders, and developers just needing more time. Anthem was developed by Bioware and released by Electronic Arts in 2019 for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and the Microsoft Windows via Origin. The same issues arose as the game lacked content and had many technical bugs that had to be worked out. This led to poor sales for the game and that was very much undercooked and released way too early. This was nice for me since I was able to pick the game up two months later at a staggering discount spending only $10 for the game. With their last update in 2020, I figured me and a friend was ready to test the world of Anthem online on the Series X in all its updated glory. Anthem is an online multiplayer action role playing game and a third person shooter in an open world. You are able to play with up to four players in a group and can play either publicly or private missions. The story revolves around rival factions between the freelancers and the Dominion. Both are researching relics found around the world that have to deal with the failure of the Heart of Rage incident two years prior. The player must unravel the mysteries along the way with dealing with the Dominion who are directly involved. You don't feel too attachment to the characters, although those close to you, like Owens, do steal the show, being comic relief when needed. Do you ever regret missing out on the glory days? Back when freelancers were treated like heroes. Contracts would just fall into their laps. Everywhere they went, they were given respect. And free sandwiches. Free sandwiches? Yeah, I haven't had my lunch yet, I'm starving. We're on a tight budget here. Budget has room for sandwiches. You're probably right. You know what? Why don't you uh, head over to the forge, get your javelin tuned up so we're ready to roll if a contract does fall into our laps. Character development is shallow and uninspiring as the player is having a second chance at redemption rather than pretty much growing up. Being a Bioware game, dialogue trees are made but doesn't give you any personality that affects the storyline. I'll run you some maintenance checks, make sure everything's humming. Won't impact performance, but I'll add moisture wicking fabric to the internal padding while I'm at it. Can't argue with that. Why would you? If you're running headfirst into chaos, may as well be comfy. I like the way you think. I have my moments. Go on, I'll run the checks while you're off. The visuals are nice. The movie cutscenes seem to skip at times, but playing it in the Series X reveals a very smooth frame rate with no dips during actual gameplay. Just wish the developers had a patch to increase the frame rate to 60 as the action can get chaotic at times and 30 frames per second is okay and nice, but can be so much better. Although the world is visually stunning at times after the first 8 to 10 hours, you'll realize right away that everything you play through seems similar from one mission to the next. It's like surprise the player early, but give them nothing else to excite them visually later on. The gameplay is some of the best action, flying, hovering, explosive gameplay I have felt in a long time. This is how Iron Man should be used as the game has it right when it comes to action. It is your average third person shooter, but with flying and hovering put into the mix, so many different ways to play opens up. I love mixing it up with a friend 
while flying around in chaos and hovering to use my super shot while a friend would plow through enemies like Superman and hover like my needle. Truly the best part of the game is its refined gameplay. Unfortunately, the game falls short into immense repetition. You basically have missions and story missions and all feel the same like a fetch quest. There are some cool bosses here and there, but the rewards seem shallow in the end. This is better looking and playing version of Fantasy Star Online 2. You basically repeat over and over and over again. At least with Fantasy Star Online 2, it's free to play and their imagination to insane bosses are the best and that still continues to surprise you and innovate. The game itself doesn't have enough story to make the Bioware story fanatics like me happy and too much repetition to make the action crazed players like me as well to stick around. All in all, more structure, different world surroundings and environments to meaningful characters and storyline would have been made this game so much better. With EA Play a part of Game Pass now and Anthem part on that list, one can hope that the increased user base might bring EA and Bioware to complete or update a game that is sorely missing content. Anthem gets a 7.0 out of 10 for its fantastic action play mechanics being wasted in a visually wonderful world with no meaningful storyline, with no surprises, and high on repetition. The great visuals and gameplay are what truly keeps you playing in this one. That's it for this 2021 look at Anthem. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg, take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload. Spot. They did well for a time. Thank <laughs> you.